maitrayaniya upanishad translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by jyoti taravnat first prapathaka the laying of the formally described sacrificial fires is indeed the sacrifice of brahman therefore let the sacrificer after he has laid those fires meditate on the self thus only does the sacrificer becomes complete and faultless but who is to be meditated on he who is called prana breath of him there is this story a king named brihadaratha having established his son in his sovereignty went into the forest because he considered this body as transient and had obtained freedom from all desires having performed the highest penance he stands there with uplifted arms looking up to the sun at the end of a thousand days the saint sakayana who knew the self came near burning with splendor like a fire without smoke he said to the king rise rise choose a boon the king bowing before him said o saint i know not the self thou knowest the essence of the self we have heard so teach it us sakayana replied this was achieved of yore but what thou askest is difficult to obtain o aikshwaka choose other pleasures the king touching the saint's feet with his head recited this gatha o saint what is the use of the enjoyment of pleasures in this offensive pithless body a mere mass of bones skin sinew marrow flesh seed blood mucus tears phlegm ordure water bile and slime what is the use of the enjoyment of pleasures in this body which is assailed by lust hatred greed delusion fear anguish jealousy separation from what is loved union with what is not loved hunger thirst old age death illness grief and other evils and we see that all this is perishable as these flies gnats and other insects as herbs and trees growing and decaying and what of these there are other great ones mighty wielders of bows rulers of empires sudhyuma buridhyuma indriyuma kuvalayasva yayuvanasva vadrayasva asvapati sasbindu harishchandra ambarisha nahausha ananta saryati yayati anaranya ukshasena etc and kings such as maruta bharata danushyanti and others who before the eyes of their whole family surrendered the greatest happiness and passed on from this world to that and what of these there are other great ones we see the destruction of gandharvas asuras yakshas rakshasas bhutas ganas pisachas snakes and vampires and what of these there is the drying up of other great oceans 
the falling of mountains the moving of the pole star the cutting of the wind ropes that hold the stars the submergence of the earth and the departure of the gods suras from their place in such a world as this what is the use of the enjoyment of pleasures if he who has fed on them is seen to return to this world again and again design therefore to take me out in this world i am like a frog in a dry well o saint thou art my way thou art my way end of first prapathaka recording by jyoti taravanat second prapathaka of maitrayani ya upanishad translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanat then the saint sakayanya well pleased said to the king great king brihadratha thou banner of the race of ikshavaku quickly obtaining a knowledge of self thou art happy and art renowned by the name of marut the wind this indeed is thy self which o saint said the king then the saint said to him he who without stopping the outbreathing proceeds upwards from the sthula to the sukshma sartha and who modified by impressions and yet not modified drives away the darkness of error he is the self thus said the saint maitri and sakayanya said to the king brihadratha he who in perfect rest rising from his body both from the sthula and sukshma and reaching the highest light comes forth in his own form he is the self thus said sakayanya this is the immortal the fearless this is brahman now then this is the science of brahman and the science of all upanishads o king which was told us by the saint maitri i shall tell it to thee we hear in the sacred records that there were once the valakilyas who had left off all evil who were vigorous and passionless they said to the prajapati kratu o saint this body is without intelligence like a cart to what supernatural being belongs this great power by which such a body has been made intelligent or who is the driver what thou knowest o saint tell us that prajapati answered and said he who in the sruti is called standing above like passionless ascetics amidst the objects of the world he indeed the pure clean undeveloped tranquil breathless bodiless endless imperishable firm everlasting unborn independent one stands in his own greatness and by him has this body been made intelligent and he is also the driver of it they said o saint how has this been made intelligent by such a being as this which has no desires and how is he its driver he answered them and said that self which is very small invisible incomprehensible called purusha dwells of his own will here in part 
just as a man who is fast asleep awakes of his own will and this part of the self which is entirely intelligent reflected in man as the sun in different vessels of water knowing the body kshetrajnana attested by his conceiving willing and believing is prajapati lord of creatures called visva by him the intelligent is this body made intelligent and he is the driver thereof they said to him o saint if this has been made intelligent by such a being as this which has no desires and if he is the driver thereof how was it he answered them and said in the beginning prajapati the lord of creatures stood alone he had no happiness when alone meditating on himself he created many creatures he looked on them and saw they were like a stone without understanding and standing like a lifeless post he had no happiness he thought i shall enter within that they may awake making himself like air vayu he entered within being one he could not do it then dividing himself fivefold he is called prana apana samana udana vyana now that air which rises upwards is prana that which moves downwards is apana that by which these two are supposed to be held is vyana that which carries the grosser material of food to the apana and brings the subtler material to each limb has the name samana after these prana apana samana comes the work of vyana and between them the prana apana and samana on one side and the vyana on the other comes the rising of the udana that which brings up or carries down what has been drunk and eaten is the udana now the upamsu vessel or prana depends on the antryama vessel apana and the antryama vessel apana on the upamsu vessel prana and between these two the self resplendent self produced heat this heat is the purusha person and this purusha is agni visvanara and thus it is said elsewhere agni visvanara is the fire within man by which the food that is eaten is cooked that is digested its noise is what one hears if one covers one's ears when a man is on the point of departing this life he does not hear that noise now he having divided himself fivefold is hidden in a secret place buddhi assuming the nature of mind having the pranas as his body resplendent having true concepts and free like ether feeling even thus that he has not attained his object he thinks from within the interior of the heart let me enjoy objects therefore having first broken open these five apertures of the senses he enjoys the objects by means of the five rains this means that these perceptive organs ear skin eye tongue nose or his rains the active organs tongue for speaking 
hands, feet, anus, generative organ, his horses, the body, his chariot, the mind, the charioteer, the whip being the temperament. Driven by that whip, this body goes round like the wheel driven by the potter. This body is made intelligent, and he is the driver thereof. This is indeed the self, who, seeming to be filled with desires, and seeming to be overcome by bright or dark fruits of action, wanders about in every body, himself remaining free. Because he is not manifest, because he is infinitely small, because he is invisible, because he cannot be grasped, because he is attached to nothing. Therefore he, seeming to be changing, an agent in that which is not Prakriti, is in reality not an agent and unchanging. He is pure, firm, stable, undefiled, unmoved, free from desire, remaining a spectator, resting in himself. Having concealed himself in the cloak of the three qualities, he appears as the enjoyer of Ritha, as the enjoyer of Ritha, of his good works. End of Second Prapataka Recording by Jyoti Taravanath Third Prapataka of Maitrayaniya Upanishad Translated by Max Muller. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat. The Valakilyas said to Prajapati Kratu, O saint, if thou dost show us the greatness of that self, then who is that other different one, also called self, who really overcome by bright and dark fruits of action, enters on a good or bad birth. Downward or upward is his course, and overcome by the pairs, distinction between hot and cold, pleasure and pain, etc., he roams about. Prajapati Krathu replied, There is indeed that other different one called the elemental self. Bhutatma, who, overcome by bright and dark fruits of action, enters on a good or bad birth. Downward or upward is his course, and overcome by the pairs he roams about. And this is his explanation. The five Tanmatras, sound, touch, form, taste, smell, are called Bhuta. Also, the five Mahabhutas, gross elements, are called Bhuta. Then the aggregate of all these is called Sarira, body. And lastly, he of whom it was said that he dwelt in the body, he is called Bhutatma, the elemental self. Thus, his immortal self is like a drop of water, on a lotus leaf, and he himself is overcome by the qualities of nature. Then, because he is thus overcome, he becomes bewildered, and because he is bewildered, he saw not the Creator, the Holy Lord, abiding within himself. Carried along by the waves of the qualities darkened in his imaginations, unstable, fickle, crippled, full of desires, 
vacillating he enters into belief believing i am he this is mine he binds his self by his self as a bird with a net and overcome afterwards by the fruits of what he has done he enters on a good and bad birth downward or upward is his course and overcome by the pairs he roams about they asked which is it and he answered them this also has elsewhere been said he who acts is the elemental self he who causes to act by means of the organs is the inner man antapurusha now as even a ball of iron pervaded overcome by fire and hammered by smiths becomes manifold assumes different forms such as crooked round large small thus the elemental self pervaded overcome by the inner man and hammered by the qualities becomes manifold and the four tribes mammals birds etc the fourteen worlds bur etc with all the number of beings multiplied eighty four times all this appears as manifoldness and those multiplied things or impelled by man purusha as the wheel by the potter and as when the ball of iron is hammered the fire is not overcome so the inner man is not overcome but the elemental self is overcome because it has united itself with the elements and it has been said elsewhere this body produced from marriage and endowed with growth in darkness came forth by the urinary passage was built up with bones bedaubed with flesh thatched with skin filled with ordure urine bile slime marrow fat oil and many impurities besides like a treasury full of treasures and it has been said elsewhere bewilderment fear grief sleep sloth carelessness decay sorrow hunger thirst niggardliness wrath infidelity ignorance envy cruelty folly shamelessness meanness pride changeability these are the results of the quality of darkness tama inward thirst fondness passion covetousness unkindness love hatred deceit jealousy vain restlessness fickleness unstableness emulation greed patronizing of friends family pride aversion to disagreeable objects devotion to agreeable objects whispering prodigality these are the results of the quality of passion rajas by these he is filled by these he is overcome and therefore this elemental self assumes manifold forms yes manifold forms end of third prapataka recording by jyoti taravanat fourth prapataka of maitrayaniya upanishad translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanat the valakhiyas whose passions were subdued approached him full of amazement and said 
O Saint, we bow before thee. Teach thou, for thou art the way, and there is no other for us. What process is there for the elemental self by which, after leaving this identity with the elemental body, he obtains union with the true self? Prajapati Kratu said to him, It has been said elsewhere, like the waves in large rivers, that which has been done before cannot be turned back, and like the tide of the sea, the approach of death is hard to stem. Bound by the fetters of the fruits of good and evil, like a cripple without freedom, like a man in prison, beset by many fears, like one standing before Yama, the judge of the dead, intoxicated by the wine of illusion, like one intoxicated by wine, rushing about, like one possessed by an evil spirit, bitten by the world, like one bitten by a great serpent, darkened by passion, like the night. Illusory, like magic, false, like a dream, pithless, like the inside of the Kadali, changing its dress in a moment, like an actor, fair in appearance, like a painted wall. Thus they call him, and therefore it is said, sound, touch, and other things are like nothings. If the elemental self is attached to them, it will not remember the highest place. This is indeed the remedy for the elemental self, acquirement of the knowledge of the Veda, performance of one's own duty, therefore conformity on the part of each man to the order to which he happens to belong. This is indeed the rule for one's own duty. Other performances are like the mere branches of a stem. Through it one obtains the highest above, otherwise one falls downward. Thus is one's own duty declared, which is to be found in the Vedas. No one belongs truly to an order, ashrama, who transgresses his own law. And if people say that a man does not belong to any of the orders, and that he is an ascetic, this is wrong. Though, on the other hand, no one who is not an ascetic brings his sacrificial works to perfection, or obtains knowledge of the highest self. For thus it is said, By ascetic penance, goodness is obtained. From goodness, understanding is reached. From understanding, the self is obtained. And he who has obtained that does not return. Brahman is. Thus said one who knew the science of Brahman. And this penance is the door to Brahman. Thus said one who by penance had cast off all sin. The syllable Om is the manifest greatness of Brahman. Thus said one who well grounded in Brahman always meditates on it. Therefore, by knowledge, by penance, and by meditation is Brahman gained. Thus one goes beyond Brahman, Hiranyagarbha, and to a divinity higher than the gods. Nay, he who knows this and worships Brahman by these three, by knowledge, penance, and meditation, obtains bliss imperishable, infinite, and unchangeable. Then freed 
from those things the senses of the body etc by which he was filled and overcome a mere charioteer he obtains union with the self the valakilyas said o saint thou art the teacher thou art the teacher what thou hast said has been properly laid up in our mind now answer us a further question agni vayu aditya time kala which is breath prana food anna brahma rudra vishnu thus do some meditate on one some on another say which of these is the best for us he said to them these are but the chief manifestations of the highest the immortal the incorporeal brahman he who is devoted to one rejoices here in his world presence thus he said brahman indeed is all this and a man may meditate on worship or discard also those which are its chief manifestations with these deities he proceeds to higher and higher worlds and when all things perish he becomes one with the purusha yes with the purusha end of fourth prapathaka recording by jyoti taravanat fifth prapathaka of maitrayani upanishad translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanat next follows kutsayana's hymn of praise thou art brahma and thou art vishnu thou art rudra thou prajapati thou art agni varuna vayu thou art indra thou the moon thou art anna the food or the eater thou art yama thou art the earth thou art all thou art the imperishable in thee all things exist in many forms whether for their natural or for their own higher ends lord of the universe glory to thee thou art the self of all thou art the maker of all the enjoyer of all thou art all life and the lord of all pleasure and joy glory to thee the tranquil the deeply hidden the incomprehensible the immeasurable without beginning and without end in the beginning darkness tamas alone was this it was in the highest and moved by the highest it becomes uneven thus it becomes obscurity rajas then this obscurity being moved becomes uneven thus it becomes goodness sattva then this goodness being moved the essence flowed forth this is that part or state of self which is entirely intelligent reflected in man 
as the sun is in different vessels of water knowing the body chetra jnana attested by his conceiving willing and believing it is prajapati called viswa his manifestations have been declared before now that part of him which belongs to darkness that o oh students is he who is called rudra that part of him which belongs to obscurity that o oh students is he who is called brahma that part of him which belongs to goodness that o oh students is he who is called vishnu he being one becomes three becomes eight becomes eleven becomes twelve becomes infinite because he thus came to be he is the being he moves about having entered all beings he has become the lord of all beings he is the self within and without yes within and without end of fifth prapataka recording by jyoti taravanat stanzas 1 to 21 of the sixth prapataka of maitreyaniya upanishad translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti tarvanat he the self bears the self in two ways as he who is prana breath and as he who is aditya the sun therefore there are two parts for him within and without and they both turn back in a day and night the sun is the outer self the inner self is breath hence the motion of the inner self is inferred from the motion of the outer self for thus it is said he who knows and has thrown off all evil the overseer of the senses the pure minded firmly grounded in the self and looking away from all earthly objects he is the same likewise the motion of the outer self is inferred from the motion of the inner self for thus it is said he who within the sun is the golden person who looks upon this earth from his golden place he is the same who after entering the inner lotus of the heart devours food perceives sensuous objects etc and he who having entered the inner lotus of the heart devours food the same having gone to the sky as the fire of the sun called time and being invisible devours all beings as his food what is that lotus and of what is it made the valakilyas ask that lotus is the same as the ether the four quarters and the four intermediate points or its leaves these two breath and the sun move on near to each other in the heart and in the ether let him worship these two with the syllable om with the vyahruti words bhu bhuva sava and with the savitri him there are two forms of brahman the material effect and the immaterial cause the material is false the immaterial is true 
that which is true is brahman that which is brahman is light and that which is light is the sun and this sun became the self of that om he divided himself threefold for om consists of three letters a u m through them all this is contained in him as warp and woof for thus it is said meditate on that sun as om join yourself the breath with the self of the sun and thus it has been said elsewhere the udgita of the sama veda is the pranava of the rig veda and the pranava is the udgita and thus the sun is udgita and he is pranava or om for thus it is said the udgita called pranava the leader in the performance of sacrifices the bright the sleepless free from old age and death three footed consisting of three letters a u m and likewise to be known as five fold five pranas placed in the cave and it is also said the three footed brahman has its root upward the branches are ether wind fire water earth etc this one aswatha by name the world is brahman and of it that is the light which is called the sun and it is also called the light of that syllable om therefore let him forever worship that breath and sun as manifestations of brahman with the syllable om he alone enlightens us for thus it is said this alone is the pure syllable this alone is the highest syllable he who knows that syllable only whatever he desires is his and thus it has been said elsewhere this om is the sound endowed body of him prana dityatman this is his gender endowed body namely feminine masculine neuter this is his light endowed body namely agni vayu aditya this is his lord endowed body namely brahma rudra vishnu this is his mouth endowed body namely garahapatya dakshinangini ahavanya this is his knowledge endowed body namely rik yajus saman this is his world endowed body namely bhu bhuva sava this is his time endowed body namely past present future this is his heat endowed body namely breath fire sun this is his growth endowed body namely food water moon this is his thought endowed body namely intellect mind personality this is his breath endowed body namely prana apana vyana therefore by the aforesaid syllable om are all these here enumerated bodies praised and identified with the prana dityatman for thus it is said o satyakama the syllable om is the high and the low brahman this world was unuttered then forsooth prajapati having brooded uttered it 
in the words bhu bhuva sava this is the grossest body of that prajapati consisting of the three worlds of that body sava is the head bhuva the navel bhu the feet the sun the eye for in the eye is fixed man's great measure because with the eye he makes all measurements the eye is truth satyam for the person purusha dwelling in the eye proceeds to all things knows all objects with certainty therefore let a man worship with the vyahritis bhu bhuva sava for thus prajapati the self of all is worshipped as the sun the eye of all for thus it is said this the sun is prajapati's all supporting body for in it this all is hid by the light of the sun and in this all it the light is hid therefore this is worshipped the savitri begins tat savitur varenaya that is this of savitri to be chosen here the aditya son is savitri and the same is to be chosen by the lover of self thus say the brahma teachers then follows the next foot in the savitri bargo devasya dimahi that is the splendor of the god we meditate on here the god is savitri and therefore he who is called his splendor him i meditate on thus say the brahma teachers then follows the last foot the yo yona prajodaya that is who should stir up our thoughts here the dio our thoughts and he should stir these up for us thus says the brahma teachers he now explains the word bargas now he who is called bargas is he who is placed in yonder aditya son or he who is the pupil in the eye and he is so called because his going gati is by rays bhavik or because he parches bargayati and makes the world to shrivel up rudra is called bargas thus say the brahma teachers or bha means that he lights up these worlds ra that he delights these beings ga that these creatures go to him and come from him therefore being a bhagha he is called bhargas surya sun is so called because soma is continually squeezed out su savitri sun is so called because he brings forth su aditya sun is so called because he takes up adha vipa or the life of man pavana is so called because he purifies pu apas water is so called because it nourishes pya and it is said surely the self absorbed in prana breath which is called immortal is the thinker the perceiver the goer the evacuator the delighter the doer the speaker the taster the smeller the seer the hearer and he touches he is vibhu the pervader who has entered into the body and it is said 
and the same self is also called isa lord sambhu bhava rudra tamasa prajapati lord of creatures visvasaraj creature of all hiranyagarbha satyam truth prana breath hamsa rajasa sastri rula vishnu narayana satvika arka savitri datri sapoda vidatri creator samraj king indra indu moon he is also he who warms the sun hidden by the thousand eyed golden egg as one fire by another he used to be thought after he used to be sought after having said farewell to all living beings having gone to the forest and having renounced all sensuous objects let man perceive the self from his own body see him who assumes all forms the golden who knows all things who ascends highest alone in his splendor and warms us the thousand rayed who abides in a hundred places the spirit of all creatures the sun rises therefore he who by knowing this has become the self of both breath and sun meditates while meditating on them on his self sacrifices while sacrificing to them to his self this meditation the mind thus absorbed in these acts is praised by the wise then let him purify the contamination of the mind by the verse ukishtopahatam etc be it food left or food defiled by left food be it food given by a sinner food coming from a dead person or from one impure from childbirth may the purifying power of vasu may agni and the rays of savitri purify it and all my sin first before eating he surrounds the offered food with water in rinsing his mouth then saying swaha to prana swaha to apana swaha to vyana swaha to samana swaha to udana he offers the food with five invocations in the fire of the mouth what is over he eats in silence and then he surrounds the food once more afterwards with water rinsing the mouth after his meal having washed let him after sacrificing to himself meditate on his self with these two verses prano jina and visvosi namely may the highest self as breath as fire digestive heat as consisting of the five vital airs having entered the body himself satisfied satisfy all he who protects all thou art visva all thou art visvanara fire all that is born is upheld by thee may all offerings enter into thee creatures live where thou grantest immortality to all he who eats according to this rule does not in turn become food for others there is something else to be known 
there is a further modification of this self-sacrifice the eating namely the food and the eater thereof this is the explanation the thinking purusha person when he abides within the pradhana nature is the feeder who feeds on the food supplied by prakriti nature the elemental self is truly his food his maker being pradhana nature therefore what is composed of the three qualities gunas is the food but the person within is the feeder and for this the evidence is supplied by the senses for animals spring from seed and as the seed is the food therefore it is clear that what is food is pradhana the seed or cause of everything therefore as has been said the purusha person is the eater prakriti the food and abiding within it he feeds all that begins with the mahat power of intellect and ends with the visesha's elements being developed from the distinction of nature with its three qualities is the sign that there must be a purusha an intelligent subject and in this manner the way with its fourteen steps has been explained this is comprehended in the following verse this world is indeed the food called pleasure pain and error the result of the three qualities there is no laying hold of the taste of the seed cause so long as there is no development in the shape of effect and in its three stages also it has the character of food as childhood youth and old age for because these are developed therefore there is in them the character of food and in the following manner does the perception of pradhana nature take place after it has become manifest intellect and the rest such as determination conception consciousness or for the tasting of the effects of pradhana then there are the five perceptive organs intended for the five objects of senses for to taste them and thus are all acts of the five active organs and the acts of the five pranas or vital airs for the tasting of their corresponding objects thus what is manifest of nature is food and what is not manifest is food the enjoyer of it is without qualities but because he has the quality of being an enjoyer it follows that he possesses intelligence as agni fire is the food eater among the gods and soma the food so he who knows this eats food by agni is not defiled by food as little as agni the sacrificial fire this elemental self called soma food is also called agni as having undeveloped nature for its mouth as enjoying through nature and being independent of it because it is said the purusha person enjoys nature with its three qualities by the mouth of undeveloped nature he who knows this is an ascetic a yogin he is a performer of the self sacrifice and he who does not touch the objects of the senses when they intrude on him as no one would touch woman intruding into an empty house he is an ascetic a yogin a performer of the self sacrifice
this is the highest form of self namely food for this prana this body subsists on food if it eats not it cannot perceive hear touch see smell taste and it loses the vital airs for thus it is said if it eats then in full possession of the vital airs it can perceive hear touch speak taste smell see and thus it is said from food are born all creatures that live on earth afterwards they live on food and in the end when they die they return to it and thus it is said elsewhere surely all these creatures run about day and night wishing to catch food the sun takes food with his rays and by it he shines these vital airs digest when sprinkled with food fire flares up by food and by brahma prajapati desirous of food has all this been made therefore let a man worship food as his self for thus it is said from food creatures are born by food they grow when born because it is eaten and because it eats creatures therefore it is called food annam and thus it is said elsewhere this food is the body of the blessed vishnu called visvabrit all sustaining breath is the essence of food mind of breath knowledge of mind joy of knowledge he who knows this is possessed of food breath mind knowledge and joy whatever creatures here on earth eat food abiding in them he who knows this eats food food has been called undecaying food has been called worshipful food is the breath of animals food is the oldest food has been called the physician and thus it has been said elsewhere food is the cause of all this time of food and the sun is a cause of time the visible form of time is the year consisting of 12 months made up of nimishas twinklings and other measures of the year one half when the sun moves northward belongs to agni the other to varuna when the sun moves southward that which belongs to agni begins with the asterism of magha and ends with half of the asterism of sarvastha the sun stepping down northward that which belongs to soma instead of varuna begins with the asterism of asleha sacred to the serpents and ends with the half of the asterism of sarvastha the sun stepping up southward and then there are the months one by one belonging to the year each consisting of 9 fourths of asterisms two asterisms and a quarter being the 12th part of the passage of the sun through the 27 nakshatras each determined by the sun moving together with the asterisms because time is imperceptible by sense therefore this the progress of the sun etc is its evidence and by it alone is time proved to exist without proof there is no apprehension of what is to be proved but even what is to be proved can become proof for the sake of making itself known if the parts the twinklings etc can be distinguished from the whole time for thus it is said 
as many portions of time as there are through them the sun proceeds he who worships time as brahman from him time moves away very far and thus it is said from time all beings flow from time they grow in time they obtain rest time is visible sun and invisible moments there are two forms of brahman time and non time that which was before the existence of the sun is non time and has no parts that which had its beginning from the sun is time and has parts of that which has parts the ear is the form and from the ear are born all creatures when produced by the ear they grow and go again to rest in the ear therefore the ear is prajapati is time is food is the nest of brahman is self thus it is said time ripens and dissolves all beings in the great self but he who knows into what time itself is dissolved he is the knower of the veda this manifest time is the great ocean of creatures he who is called savitri the sun as begetter dwells in it from whence the moon stars planets the year and the rest are begotten from them again comes all this and thus whatever of good or evil is seen in this world comes from them therefore brahman is the self of the sun and a man should worship the sun under the name of time some say the sun is brahman and thus it is said the sacrificer the deity that enjoys the sacrifice the oblation the him the sacrifice vishnu prajapati all this is the lord the witness that shines in yonder orb in the beginning brahman was all this he was one and infinite infinite in the east infinite in the south infinite in the west infinite in the north above and below and everywhere infinite east and the other regions do not exist for him nor across nor below nor above the highest self is not to be fixed he is unlimited unborn not to be reasoned about not to be conceived he is like the ether everywhere and at the destruction of the universe he alone is awake thus from that ether we wakes all this world which consists of thought only and by him alone is all this meditated on and in him it is dissolved his is that luminous form which shines in the sun and the manifold light in the smokeless fire and the heat which in the stomach digests the food thus it is said he who is in the fire and he who is in the heart and he who is in the sun they are one and the same he who knows this becomes one with the one this is a rule for achieving it namely concentration of the mind on the object of meditation restraint of the breath restraint of the senses meditation fixed attention investigation 
absorption these are called the sixfold yoga when beholding by this yoga he beholds the gold colored maker the lord the person brahman the cause then the sage leaving behind good and evil makes everything breath organs of sense body etc to be one in the highest indestructible in the pratyatman or brahman and thus it is said as birds and deer do not approach a burning mountain so sins never approach those who know brahman and thus it is said elsewhere when he who knows has while he is still prana breath restrained his mind and placed all objects of the senses far away from himself then let him remain without any conceptions and because the living person called prana breath has been produced here on earth from that which is not prana the thinking self therefore let this prana merge the prana himself in what is called the thought and thus it is said what is without thought though placed in the center of thought what cannot be thought the hidden the highest let a man merge his thought there then will this living being linger be without attachment and thus it has been said elsewhere there is the superior fixed attention dharana for him namely if he presses the tip of the tongue down the palate and restrains voice mind and breath he sees brahman by discrimination tarka and when after the cessation of mind he sees his own self smaller than small and shining as the highest self then having seen his self as the self he becomes selfless and because he is selfless he is without limit without cause absorbed in thought this is the highest mystery namely final liberation and thus it is said through the serenity of the thought he kills all actions good or bad his self serene abiding in the self obtains imperishable bliss and thus it has been said elsewhere the artery called sushmana going upwards from the heart to the brahmanandra serving as the passage of the prana is divided within the palate through that artery when it has been joined by the breath held in subjection by the sacred syllable om and by the mind absorbed in the contemplation of brahman let him proceed upwards and after turning the tip of the tongue to the palate without using any of the organs of sense let greatness perceive greatness from thence he goes to selflessness and through selflessness he ceases to be an enjoyer of pleasure and pain he obtains a loneness kevalatva final deliverance and thus it is said having successively fixed the breath after it had been restrained in the palate thence having crossed the limit the life let him join himself afterwards to the limitless brahman in the crown of the head end of stanzas 1 to 21 of the 6th prapathaka of maitreya upanishad recording by jyoti tarawanat stanzas 
22 to 38 of the sixth prapathaka of maitrayaniya upanishad translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti tarvanat and thus it has been said elsewhere two brahmans have to be meditated on the word and the non word by the word alone is the non word revealed now there is the word om moving upward by it where all words and all what is meant by them ceases he arrives at absorption in the non word brahman this is the way this is the immortal this is union and this is bliss and as the spider moving upward by the thread gains free space thus also he who meditates moving upward by the syllable om gains independence other teachers of the word as brahman think otherwise they listen to the sound of the ether within the heart while they stop the ears with the thumbs they compare it to seven noises like rivers like a bell like a brazen vessel like the wheels of a carriage like the croaking of frogs like rain and as if a man speaks in a cavern having passed beyond this variously apprehended sound and having settled in the supreme soundless non word unmanifested brahman they become undistinguished and undistinguishable as various flavors of the flowers are lost in the taste of honey and thus it is said two brahmans are to be known the word brahman and the highest brahman he who is perfect in the word brahman attains the highest brahman and thus it has been said elsewhere the syllable om is what is called the word and its end is the silent the soundless fearless sorrowless joyful satisfied firm unwavering immortal immovable certain brahman called vishnu let him worship these two that he may obtain what is higher than everything final deliverance for thus it is said he who is the high and the highest god by name omkara he is soundless and free from all distinctions therefore let a man dwell on him in the crown of his head and thus it has been said elsewhere the body is the bow the syllable om is the arrow its point is the mind having cut through the darkness which consists of ignorance it approaches that which is not covered by darkness then having cut through that which was covered the personal soul he saw brahman flashing like a wheel on fire bright like the sun vigorous beyond all darkness that which shines forth in yonder sun in the moon in the fire in the lightning and having seen him he obtains immortality and thus it has been said meditation is directed to the highest being brahman within and before to the objects body om mind thence the indistinct understanding becomes distinct 
and when the works of the mind are dissolved then that bliss which requires no other witness that is brahman atman the immortal the brilliant that is the way that is the true world and thus it has been said elsewhere he who has his senses hidden as in sleep and who while in the cavern of his senses his body but no longer ruled by them sees as in a dream with the purest intellect him who is called pranava om the leader the bright the sleepless free from old age from death and sorrow he is himself also called pranava and becomes a leader bright sleepless free from old age from death and sorrow and thus it is said because in this manner he joins the prana breath the om and this universe in its manifold forms or because they join themselves to him therefore this process of meditation is called yoga joining the oneness of breath mind and senses and then the surrendering of all conceptions that is called yoga and thus it has also been said elsewhere as a sportsman after drawing out the denizens of the waters with a net offers them as a sacrifice in the fire of his stomach thus are these pranas vital as after they have been drawn out with the syllable om offered in the faultless fire brahman hence he is like a heated vessel full of clarified butter for as the clarified butter in the heated vessel lights up when touched with grass and sticks thus does this being which is called not breath atman light up when touched by the pranas the vital airs and that which flares up that is the manifest form of brahman that is the highest place of vishnu that is the essence of rudra and this dividing itself in endless ways fills all these worlds and thus it is said as the sparks from the fire and as the rays from the sun thus do his pranas and the rest in proper order again and again proceed from here on earth and thus it has also been said elsewhere this is the heat of the highest the immortal the incorporeal brahman namely the warmth of the body and this body is the clarified butter poured on it by which the heat of brahman otherwise invisible is lighted up then being manifest it is placed in the ether of the heart then by concentration they thus remove that ether which is within the heart so that its light appears as it were therefore the worshipper becomes identified with that light without much delay as a ball of iron if placed in the earth becomes earth without much delay and as when it has once become a clod of earth fire and smiths have nothing more to do with that ball of iron thus does thought without delay disappear together with its support and thus it is said the shrine which consists of the ether in the heart the blissful the highest retreat that is our own that is our goal and that is the heat and brightness of the fire and the sun and thus it has been said elsewhere after having left behind the body the organs of sense and the objects of sense as no longer belonging to us and having seized the bow whose stick is fortitude and whose string is asceticism 
having struck down also with the arrow which consists in freedom from egotism the first guardian of the door of brahman for if man looks at the world egotistically then taking the diadem of passion the carrings of greed and envy and the staff of sloth sleep and sin and having seized the bow whose string is anger and whose stick is lust he destroys with the arrow which consists of wishes all beings having therefore killed that guardian he crosses by means of the boat om to the other side of the ether within the heart and when the ether becomes revealed as brahman he enters slowly as a miner seeking minerals in a mine into the hall of brahman after that let him by means of the doctrine of his teacher break through the shrine of brahman which consists of the four nets of food breath mind knowledge till he reaches the last shrine that of blessedness and identity with brahman thenceforth pure clean undeveloped tranquil breathless bodiless endless imperishable firm everlasting unborn and independent he stands on his own greatness and having seen the self standing in his own greatness he looks on the wheel of the world as one who has alighted from a chariot looks on its revolving wheel and thus it is said if a man practices yoga for 6 months and is thoroughly free from the outer world then the perfect yoga union which is endless high and hidden is accomplished but if a man though well enlightened by the instruction is still pierced by the gunas of passion and darkness and attracted to his children wife and house then perfect yoga is never accomplished after he has thus spoken to brahadratha sakayanya absorbed in thought bowed before him and said o king by means of this brahma knowledge have the sons of prajapati the valakilyas gone to the road of brahman through the practice of yoga a man obtains contentment power to endure good and evil and tranquility let no man preach this most secret doctrine to any one who is not his son or his pupil and who is not of a serene mind to him alone who is devoted to his teacher only and endowed with all necessary qualities may he communicate it o having settled down in a pure place let him being pure himself and firm in goodness study the truth speak the truth think the truth and offer sacrifice to the truth henceforth he has become another by obtaining the reward of brahman his fetters are cut asunder he knows no hope no fear from others as little as from himself he knows no desires and having attained imperishable infinite happiness he stands blessed in the true brahman who longs for a true man freedom from desires is as it were the highest prize to be taken from the best treasure brahman for a man full of all desires being possessed of will imagination and belief is a slave but he who is the opposite is free here some say it is the guna 
that is the so-called mahat the principle of intellect which according to the sankhyas is the result of the gunas or qualities which through the differences of nature acquired in the former states of existence goes into bondage to the will and that deliverance takes place for the guna when the fault of the will has been removed but this is not our view because call it guna intellect buddhi manas mind ahankara egotism it is not the mind that acts but he sees by the mind as his instrument he hears by the mind and all that we call desire imagination doubt belief unbelief certainty uncertainty shame thought fear all that is but mind manas carried along by the waves of the qualities darkened in his imaginations unstable fickle crippled full of desires vacillating he enters into belief believing i am he this is mine and he binds his self by his self as a bird with a net therefore a man being possessed of will imagination and belief is a slave but he who is the opposite is free for this reason let a man stand free from will imagination and belief this is the sign of liberty this is the path that leads to brahman this is the opening of the door and through it he will go to the other shore of darkness all the desires are there fulfilled and for this they quote a verse when the five instruments of knowledge stand still together with the mind and when the intellect does not move that is called the highest state having thus said sakayanya became absorbed in thought then marut that is the king brahadrata having bowed before him and duly worshiped him went full of contentment to the northern path for there is no way thither by any side road this is the path to brahman having burst open the solar door he rose on high and went away and here they caught there are endless rays arteries for the self who like a lamp dwells in the heart white and black brown and blue tawny and reddish one of them the sushmana leads upwards piercing the solar orb by it having stepped beyond the world of brahman they go to the highest path the other hundred rays rise upwards also and on them the worshipper reaches the mansions belonging to the different bodies of gods but the manifest rays of dim color which lead downwards by them a man travels on and on helplessly to enjoy the fruits of his actions here therefore it is said that the holy aditya son is the cause of new births to those who do not worship him of heaven to those who worship him as a god of liberty to those who worship him as brahman someone asks of what nature are those organs of sense that go forth towards their objects who sends them out there or who holds them back another answers their nature is the self the self sends them out or holds them back also the apsaras enticing objects of sense and the solar rays and other deities presiding over the senses now the sense devours the objects of the five rays the organs of sense then who is the self he who has been defined by the terms pure clean undeveloped tranquil etc who is to be apprehended independently by his own peculiar signs 
that sign of him who has no signs is like what the pervading heat is on fire but the purest taste of water thus say some it is speech hearing sight mind breath thus say others it is intellect retention remembering knowledge thus say others now all these are signs of the self in the same sense in which here on earth shoots are the signs of seed or smoke light and sparks of fire and for this they quote as the sparks from the fire and as the rays from the sun thus do his pranas and the rest in proper order again and again proceed from him here on earth from this very self abiding within his self come forth all pranas speech etc all worlds all vedas all gods and all beings its upanishad revelation is that it is the true of the true now as from a fire of green wood when kindled clouds of smoke come forth by themselves though belonging to the fire thus from that great being has been breathed forth all this which is the rig veda the yajur veda the sama veda the adarvangi rasas atarva veda the itihasa legendary stories the purana accounts of the creation etc vidya ceremonial doctrines the upanishads the shlokas verses interspersed in the upanishads etc the sutras compendious statements the anuvakyanas explanatory notes the vakyanas elucidations all these things are his this fire the grahapathya fire with five bricks is the ear and its five bricks are spring summer rainy season autumn winter and by them the fire has a head two sides a center and a tail this earth grahapathya fire here is the first sacrificial pile for prajapati who knows the purusha the viraj it presented the sacrificer to vayu the wind by lifting him with his hands to the sky that vayu is prana hiranyagarbha prana is agni the dakshinangini fire and its bricks are the five vital breaths prana vyana apana samana udhana and by them the fire has a head two sides a center and a tail this sky the dakshinangini fire here is the second sacrificial pile for prajapati who knows the purusha it presented the sacrificer to indra by lifting him with the hands to heaven that indra is aditya the sun that indra is the agni the ahavanya fire and its bricks are the rik the yajush the saman the atarvanangiras the itihasa and the purana and by them the fire has a head two sides a tail and a center this heaven ahavanya fire is the third sacrificial pile for prajapati who knows the purusha with the hands it makes a present of the sacrificer to the knower of their self prajapati then the knower of the self lifting him up presented him to brahman in him he becomes full of happiness and joy the earth is the grahapathya fire the sky 
the dakshina fire the heaven the ahavanya fire and therefore they are also the pavamana pure the pavaka purifying and sukhi brightness by this by the three deities pavamana pavaka and sukhi the sacrifice of the three fires the grahapatya dakshinaya and advanya is manifested and because the digestive fire also is a compound of the pavamana pavaka and sukhi therefore that fire is to receive oblations is to be laid with bricks is to be praised and to be meditated on the sacrificer when he has seized the oblation wishes to perform his meditation of the deity the gold colored bird abides in the heart and in the sun a diver bird a swan strong in splendor him we worship in the fire having recited the verse he discovers its meaning namely the adorable splendor of savitri sun is to be meditated on by him who abiding within his mind meditates thereon here he obtains the place of rest for the mind he holds it within his own self on this there are the following verses as a fire without fuel becomes quiet in its place thus do the thoughts when all activity ceases becomes quiet in their place even in a mind which loves the truth and has gone to rest in itself there arise when it is deluded by the objects of sense wrongs resulting from former acts for thoughts alone cause the round of births let a man strive to purify his thoughts what a man thinks that he is this is the old secret by the serenity of his thoughts a man blots out all actions whether good or bad dwelling within his self with serene thoughts he obtains imperishable happiness if the thoughts of a man were so fixed on brahman as they are on the things of this world who would not then be freed from bondage the mind it is said is of two kinds pure or impure impure from the contact with lust pure when free from lust when a man having freed his mind from sloth distraction and vacillation becomes as it were delivered from his mind that is the highest point the mind must be restrained in the heart till it comes to an end that is knowledge that is liberty all the rest or extensions of the ties which bind us to this life that happiness which belongs to a mind which by deep meditation has been washed clean from all impurity and has entered within the self cannot be described here by words it can be felt by the inward power only water in water fire in fire ether in ether no one can distinguish them likewise a man whose mind has entered till it cannot be distinguished from the self attains liberty mind alone is the cause of bondage and liberty for men if attached to the world it becomes bound if free from the world that is liberty therefore those who do not offer the agnihotra as described above who do not lay the fires with the bricks as described above who are 
ignorant of the mind being the cause of the round of births who do not meditate on the self in the solar orb are debarred from remembering the ethereal place of brahman therefore that fire is to receive oblations is to be laid with bricks is to be praised to be meditated on adoration to agni the dweller on earth who remembers his world grant that world to this thy worshipper adoration to vayu the dweller in the sky who remembers his world grant that world to this thy worshipper adoration to aditya the dweller in heaven who remembers his world grant that world to this thy worshipper adoration to brahman who dwells everywhere who remembers all grant all to this thy worshipper the mouth of the true brahman is covered with a golden lid open that o potion sun that we may go to the true one who pervades all vishnu he who is the person in the sun i am he and what is meant by the true one is the essence of the sun that which is bright personal sexless a portion only of the light which pervades the ether which is as it were in the midst of the sun and in the eye and in the fire that is brahman that is immortal that is splendor that is a true one a portion only of the light which pervades the ether which is in the midst of the sun the immortal of which soma the moon and the vital breaths also are offshoots that is brahman that is immortal that is splendor that is the true one a portion only of the light which pervades the ether which in the midst of the sun shines as yajus namely as om as water light essence immortal brahman bhu bhuva sava om the eight footed the bright the swap bound with three threads the infinitely small the imperishable blind for good and evil kindled with light he who sees him sees everything a portion only of the light which pervades the ether or the two rays rising in the midst of the sun that is the noor the sun the true one that is the yajus that is the heat that is agni fire that is vayu wind that is breath that is water that is the moon that is bright that is immortal that is the place of brahman that is the ocean of light in that ocean the sacrifices are dissolved like salt and that is oneness with brahman for all desires are there fulfilled and here they coat like a lamp moved by a gentle wind he who dwells within the gods shines forth he who knows this he is the noah he knows the difference between the high and the highest brahman having obtained unity he becomes identified with it they who rise up in endless number like spray drops from the sea like lightnings from the light within the clouds in the highest heaven they when they have entered into the light of glory brahman appear like so many flame crests in the track of fire there are two manifestations of the brahma light one is tranquil the other lively 
of that which is tranquil the ether is the support of that which is lively food therefore to the former sacrifice must be offered on the house altar with hymns herbs ghee meat cakes stalipaka and other things to the latter with meat and drinks belonging to the great sacrifices thrown into the mouth for the mouth is the ahavanya fire and this is done to increase our bodily vigor to gain the world of purity and for the sake of immortality and here they quote let him who longs for heaven offer an agnihotra by an agnihoma he wins the kingdom of yama by ukta the kingdom of soma by a shodas in sacrifice the kingdom of surya by an atiratra sacrifice the kingdom of indra by the sacrifices beginning with the twelve night sacrifice and ending with the thousand years sacrifice the world of prajapati as a lamp burns so long as the vessel that holds the wick is filled with oil these two the self and the bright sun remain so long as the egg of the world and he who dwells within it hold together therefore let a man perform all these ceremonies with the syllable om at the beginning its splendor is endless and it is declared to be threefold in the fire of the altar in the sun the deity in the breath the sacrificer now this is the channel to increase the food which makes what is offered in the fire ascend to the sun the sap which flows from thence rains down as with the sound of a hymn by it there are vital breaths from them there is offspring and here they quote the offering which is offered in the fire goes to the sun the sun rains it down by his rays thus food comes and from food the birth of living beings and thus he said the oblation which is properly thrown on the fire goes toward the sun from the sun comes rain from rain food from food living beings he who offers the agnihotra breaks through the net of desire then cutting through bewilderment never approving of anger meditating on one desire that of liberty he breaks through the shrine of brahman with its four nets and proceeds thence to the ether for having there broken through the four spheres of the sun the moon the fire and goodness he then being purified himself beholds dwelling in goodness immovable immortal indestructible firm bearing the name of vishnu the highest abode endowed with love and truth and omniscience the self dependent intelligence brahman standing in its own greatness and here they caught in the midst of the sun stands the moon in the midst of the moon the fire in the midst of fire goodness in the midst of goodness the eternal having meditated on him who has the breath of a thumb within the span of the heart in the body who is smaller than small he obtains the nature of the highest there all desires are fulfilled and on this they quote having the breath of a thumb within the span of the heart in the body like the flame of a lamp burning twofold or threefold 
that glorified brahman the great god has entered into all the worlds om adoration to brahman adoration end of stanzas 22 to 38 of the 6th prapathaka of maitreyaniya upanishad Recording by Jyoti Tarawadt Seventh Prapathaka of Maitrayaniya Upanishad Translated by Max Muller This LibriVox recording is in the public domain Recording by Jyoti Tarawadt agni the gayatra meta the trivrit hem the ratantara song the spring the upward breath prana the nakshatras the vasus deities these rise in the east they warm they rain they praise the sun they enter again into him the sun they look out for him the sun he the sun is inconceivable without form deep covered blameless solid unfathomable without qualities pure brilliant and the mighty immeasurable without beginning or end blissful unborn wise indescribable the creator of all things the self of all things the enjoyer of all things the ruler of all things the center of the center of all things indra the trishtubhmita the pankadasa hymn the brihat song the sama the thara going breath vyana soma the rudras these rise in the south they warm they rain they praise they enter again into him they look out for him he the sun is without end or beginning unmeasured unlimited not to be moved by another self dependent without sign without form of endless power the creator the maker of light the maruts the gakati meter the spatadasa him the vai rupa song the rainy season the downward breath apana sukra the adithyas these rise in the west they warm they rain they praise they enter again into him they look out for him that is the tranquil the soundless fearless sorrowless joyful satisfied firm immovable immortal eternal true the highest abode bearing the name of vishnu the visvedevas the anustub meta the ekavimsa him the vairaga song the autumn the equal breath samana varuna the sadhyas these rise in the north they warm they rain they praise they enter again into him they look out for him he is pure within purifying undeveloped tranquil breathless selfless endless mitra varunavu the panki meter the trinavatrayana strimsa hymns the sakavara raivta songs the snowy the dewy seasons the outgoing breath udana the angiras the moon these rise above they warm they rain they praise they enter again into him they look out for him who is called pranava om the leader consisting of light without sleep old age death and sorrow sunny saturn rahu and ketu 
the ascending and descending nodes the serpents rakshasas yakshas men birds sarabhas elephants etc these rise below they warm they reign they praise they enter again into him they look out for him he who is wise who keeps things in their right place the center of all the imperishable the pure the purifier the bright the patient the tranquil and he is indeed the self smaller than small within the heart kindled like fire endowed with all forms of him is all this food within him all creatures are woven that self is free from sin free from old age from death and grief from hunger and thirst imagining nothing but what it ought to imagine and desiring nothing but what it ought to desire he is the highest lord he is the supreme master of all beings the guardian of all beings a boundary keeping all things apart in their right places he the self the lord is indeed sambhu bhava rudra prajapati the creator of all hiranyagarbha the true breath the swan the ruler of the eternal vishnu narayana and he who abides in the fire and he who abides in the heart and he who abides in the sun they are one and the same to thee who art this endowed with all forms settled in the true ether be adoration now follow the impediments in the way of knowledge o king this is indeed the origin of the net of bewilderment that one who is worthy of heaven lives with those who are not worthy of heaven that is it though they have been told that there is a grove before them they cling to a small shrub and others also who are always merry always abroad always begging always making a living by handy work and others who are begging in towns performing sacrifices for those who are not allowed to offer sacrifices who make themselves the pupils of sudras and sudras who know the sacred books and others who are malignant who use bad language dancers prize fighters traveling mendicants actors those who have been degraded in the king's service and others who for money pretend that they can lay the evil influences yavyakshas rakshasas ghosts goblins devils serpents imps etc and others who falsely wear red dresses earrings and skulls and others who wish to entice by the jugglery of false arguments mere comparisons and paralogisms the believers in the veda with all these he should not live together they are cleverly thieves and unworthy of heaven and thus it is said the world unsettled by the paralogisms of the denial of self by false comparisons and arguments does not know what is the difference between veda and philosophy brahaspati having become sukra brought forth that false knowledge for the safety of indra and for the destruction of the asuras by it they show that good is evil and that evil is good they say that we ought to ponder on the new law which upsets the veda and the other sacred books therefore let no one ponder on that false knowledge it is wrong it is as it were barren its reward lasts only as long as the pleasure lasts as with one who has fallen from his caste let that false science not be attempted for thus it is said widely opposed and divergent are these two 
the one known as false knowledge the other as knowledge i yama believe nachiketas to be possessed by a desire of knowledge even many pleasures do not move thee he who knows at the same time both the imperfect sacrifice etc and the perfect knowledge of the self he crosses death by means of the imperfect and obtains immortality by means of the perfect knowledge those who are wrapped up in the midst of imperfect knowledge fancying themselves alone wise and learned they wander about floundering and deceiving like the blind led by the blind the gods and the demons wishing to know the self went in to the presence of brahman their father prajapati having bowed before him they said o blessed one we wish to know the self do thou tell us then after having pondered a long while he thought these demons are not yet self subdued therefore a very different self was told to them from what was told to the gods on that self these deluded demons take their stand clinging to it destroying the true means of salvation the veda preaching untruth what is untrue they see as true as in jugglery therefore what is taught in the vedas that is true what is said in the vedas on that the wise keep their stand therefore let a brahman not read what is not of the veda or this will be the result this is indeed the nature of it the veda the supreme light of the ether which is within the heart this is taught as threefold in the fire in the sun in the breath this is indeed the nature of it the syllable om of the ether which is within the heart by it by the om that light starts rises breathes forth becomes forever the means of the worship and knowledge of brahman that light in the shape of om when there is breathing takes the place of the internal heat free from all brightness this is like the action of smoke for when there is a breath of air the smoke first rising to the sky in one column follows afterwards every ball envelops it and then takes its shape it is like throwing salt into water like heating ghee the veda comes and goes like the dissolving view of a master magician and here they quote why then is it called like lightning because as soon as it comes forth as om it lights up the whole body therefore let a man worship that boundless light by the syllable om the man in the eye who abides in the right eye he is indra and his wife abides in the left eye the union of these two takes place in the cavity within the heart and the ball of blood which is there that is indeed the vigor and life of these two there is a channel going from the heart so far and fixed in that eye that is the artery for both of them being one divided into two the mind excites the fire of the body that fire stirs the breath and the breath moving in the chest produces the low sound brought forth by the touch of the fire as with a churning stick it is at first a minim from the minim it becomes in the throat a double minim on the tip of the tongue know that it is a treble minim and when uttered they call it the alphabet he who sees this does not see death nor disease nor misery for seeing he sees all objectively not as affecting him subjectively he becomes all everywhere he becomes brahman there is the person in the eye there is he who walks as in sleep he who is sound asleep and he who is above the sleeper these are the four conditions of the self and the fourth is greater 
than all brahman with one foot moves in the three and brahman with three feet is in the last it is that both the true in the fourth condition and the untrue in the three conditions may have their desert that the great self seems to become two yes that he seems to become two end of seventh prapataka end of maitrayaniya upanishad recording by jyoti taravanat